Let's come back to France now, where the Prime Minister Jean Castex is giving a press conference on the government's plan uh, to fight the increase in COVID-19 cases in France. Let's listen. For health and solidarity, we'll be giving a weekly press report to update you on the situation. And as I've been doing throughout the summer, I also may well jump in when it is necessary. Okay, so let's move on to the public health situation today. Let's look at the situation as it stands, first of all. As you all know, I'm sure, for the last weeks we have been in a, an ascending phase of the epidemic. The R rate, as it is known, the reproduction rate of the virus is above 1. What that means is that the virus is gaining ground. The R figure reached 3 at the height of the epidemic and we pushed it down to 0.7 in May. Today, we are looking at about 1.4. We had less than 1,000 new cases at the end of the lockdown. Today, we are looking at more than 3,000 new cases daily. Now, of course, these figures should be taken within their context, because if you look back at May, we are now testing far more people than we used to, and the more tests you do, the more cases you find. However, the spike is showing that there are more people that are testing positive, so the positive rate is going up. It was at about 1% right at the end of lockdown, we are now looking at that figure being nearer or above 3.7%. This means that the shared incidence rate is at 39 people for 100,000 people. That is four times higher than a month ago. This is not just true of France. As you know, the virus is present all around the world. You can see on the map that nearby European countries are all experiencing a rise in the incidence rate, around 20 for 100,000 in Germany and in the UK, around 40 for 100,000 in the Netherlands, just like France, and about 60 for 100,000 in Belgium. Outside of Europe, some countries are experiencing incidence rates that are extremely high, especially the US or Brazil. Let's come back to France now. The statistics are clear. This virus is being transmitted between young people. If you look at the 20 to 30 tranche, these young people have a transmission rate of around 6% higher than the national average. This serves to explain, on the one hand, the asymptomatic people, who we understand are in relatively high number in that young tranche, so people who have the virus without knowing that they do. And this also explains, and this is a key indicator, the impact that for the time being is relatively low of the statistic changes that we're seeing on our public health system. That being said, the number of cases is going up across the age ranges and the number of hospital admissions is slowly but steadily on the rise again. More than 800 COVID patients were admitted, are admitted today per week in hospitals versus 500 six weeks ago. This isn't a huge leap, but it's the beginning of a trend. Another thing of note, Geographically, the virus is on the rise across France, but there are some départements that are more affected than others. The virus is present in all regions around France, and no longer just in the east and the greater Paris region, as was the case at the beginning. In most départements, the incidence rate is above 10 for 100,000. That being said, the statistics are very uneven, as you can see by the map on the board. A number of departements have broken through the 50 for 100,000 threshold. That is an important threshold in the way we measure the public health crisis, because 
We now have 19 new departments in red. That means that they are the active transmission areas. That means that we now have 21 red departments, as Paris and the Bouches du Rhône were already on the list. This leads to a number of things that I'll come back to later. These indicators show that the epidemic is gaining ground and that now is the time to act, or at the very least, now is the time to continue to work against the epidemic. Something has changed since the summer in France and abroad. The scientists didn't necessarily include this in their models, they didn't foresee it necessarily, and that was what led me to ring the alarm bell at the beginning of August related to my summer travels. Ringing that alarm bell, ladies and gentlemen, does not mean that we are in the kind of situation we were in at the beginning of the year. Thank God we are very far away from what we experienced in April and March. At the time, the incidence rate, so at the height of the public health crisis, we were at about 1,000 for 100,000, about 20 times higher than today. However, now is the time to act because the growth of the epidemic could be exponential if we do not act fast. The good news, of course, over the beginning of the year, is that today we are better equipped to follow the changes in the epidemic. That means that we are more able to act effectively and faster and more precisely, so geographically, in a much more targeted way. That's the data, a spike in the transmission of the disease in France, Europe and the world. So what can we do about it? What has the government done and what will the government do? First of all, I would like to remind you of the overall logic of what we do. And it could be summarized in one sentence living with the virus. The virus is there, it's out there, as we've seen, and it seems even to be gaining ground, as we've said. What this means is that we need to use all the means we have to protect ourselves and to stop that rise. As we are vigilant, as we protect ourselves, we need to continue to live and work, learn, enjoy ourselves, continue to live. September is around the corner in France and elsewhere. That is when things get back going after the summer holidays. And we want that economic activity to be safe, but also booming, because when things stop, then the economic and social damage of the public health crisis get worse, and we want to avoid that. It is our duty to predict and allow for any future scenarios, and that means two things. First of all, a harder lockdown in the future, targeted or national, are already ready to go and have been prepared by the Minister for Health. Our hospital system, our public health system, is also prepared for a potential second wave of patients, masks, beds, drugs and equipment. But our goal is, of course, to do anything we can to avoid another lockdown, especially a wide lockdown, to avoid a huge influx of patients into the ICU units, as we've seen in the past. And I can tell you that that is possible, so long as we are all on board and act in a responsible manner. The first symbol of September is the back-to-school period. And as I said, for weeks now, we have been preparing for this event because, as I'm sure you've observed, the virus didn't take any time off and neither did the government and our Minister for Education will be coming back to that in a minute. 
People will also be going back to work, remotely or in the offices. And we have also implemented measures to make sure that people can go back to work as safely as possible. This is why, of course, first of all, we need to prevent transmission. We need to protect people from the virus, protect everyone. And before Olivier Véran comes back to the details of this, I would like to give you some of the main drivers of our policy on this matter. Our first weapon in the fight against the spread of the virus is, of course, prevention. Once again, I say it clearly and loudly to you, prevention measures are everyone's business. But we must protect first and foremost the people who are the most vulnerable to the virus, people who are over the age of 70, and those among us who already have chronic illnesses, serious chronic illnesses that the virus could be very dangerous to. These are the people that we need to protect first and foremost, because these are the people, as we know, who experience the virus in its most acute form and it's sometimes deadly. We have made great progress in this. We have been clearly and consistently sending messages that they heard, but Everyone else, all of the other generations, need to be ever responsible for them, to protect them. And seeing as children will be going back to school, for example, let's make sure that grandma and grandpa don't pick up the kids from school, even if that means we need to strengthen after-school measures so that the parents can pick up the kids. We've said it many times in the past, protection today means wearing a mask. As often as possible, over the last months, we have garnered more understanding of the virus. We now understand that the transmission of the virus can be through the air, as we've heard from the WHO. Our High Council, Council on Public Health has drawn up a number of recommendations, including always wearing a mask. And we have implemented measures and will continue in the future to implement measures in that regard. I would like to remind you that masks, first of all, on the 11th of May, were made compulsory at the end of lockdown in public transport, then in public spaces and in stores then in public spaces with a large amount of people going to them. And as September approaches, the doctrine has now been spread to offices and schools. The rule is simple. Wearing a mask is now compulsory in any closed space where multiple people are, a train, a museum, a supermarket, a meeting room. These rules are now applied in companies, open spaces, offices, corridors, unless you're on your own in your office. And we're waiting to see in what measure the High Council on Public Health will decide to adjust these measures depending on the region or the company. This is a principle that serves to protect people. This will, of course, be implemented from September in schools. All teachers from preschool to high school will need to wear masks, and all of the students from middle school upwards. This is in line with the High Council's recommendations and our teacher organizations. The mask will be compulsory for everyone. This, of course, raises the question of getting masks. Masks are a commodity, an everyday object for the French people today. And I would like to remind you of what France has done for these masks. We've been one of the most generous nations in the world. Number one, we supply free masks to 
our poorest citizens and to their children who may be going to school. We recently sent 50 million masks to 3 million people in the lowest income bracket, so 9 million French people. We have decided to renew that same operation in October and we will do it as often as necessary until the end of the epidemic. So that is for people with low income. Then we have people who are vulnerable to the disease. I've already mentioned them earlier in my speech, and they need masks, sometimes special masks. I'd like to remind you that since May, those people can get free masks from their pharmacy using a prescription. So this is a balanced policy that requires everyone to be mindful and responsible. Masks are free for the people with the lowest incomes and for the people who are the most at risk, medically speaking, from the virus. I would like to add that wearing a mask should not make us forget the other things we need to do. We must continue to regularly wash our hands to keep more than a meter away from each other when possible as well. Beyond rules and banning things, what it comes down to is being careful in our everyday lives. Wearing a mask is not always the easiest thing, it's not always nice. Staying away from people is not something that comes naturally. But, let's be honest, these are not the worst things that we could have to do either. Avoiding family gatherings, if possible. Making sure you protect yourself even at home with your family. These are all things we can do. As a reminder, only 20% of the contaminations come from clusters, so an office or a region. What that means is that most of the transmission of the virus comes from people meeting each other in their everyday lives, especially in private spaces, so we need to be responsible. So, protection, wearing your mask, the main tool we have in the fight against COVID. Our second weapon is what we call breaking the transmission chain. So, if someone has the virus, we need to make sure that they cannot transmit it to other people. This means testing, this means isolating the people who are proven to have COVID, and identifying the people that they were in contact with. The three things, testing, follow-up and treating, have been applied in France for a long time. And it's important to identify the people we have been in contact with in the past, and we need to make sure that we properly isolate when we're called upon to do so. I'd like to remind you that we have deployed testing capacity, which is amongst the highest in the world, 830,000 tests per week that could be pushed up to 1 million tests per week in September. We are testing people at the borders in the northern Paris airport, which was high performance. But of course, we can do better. Olivier Véran will be coming back to this later. We need to help people who are symptomatic get easier access to testing, and we also need to work on other ways of testing. And once again, there will always be places with people queuing, people who can't access testing. We need to be patient and we need to work on solving these issues. Our third weapon that is useful in the fight against this epidemic is how we look at regions. I, as did the previous government, wanted to have an in-the-field approach to management of the epidemic with targeted, fast and proportionate response when it is necessary if the situation starts to slide with regards COVID in a particular region. The clearest illustration of the effectiveness of this strategy 
is without a doubt what we were able to do in Mayenne. The media showed the situation on the 28th of July at the spike of the epidemic in that region. We were beyond we were above 180,000, 180 people for 100,000. And following all of the measures implemented by various authorities, we were able to drive that down to about 60 cases for 100,000, so divided by three. Another illustration of our work, the prefects, with support, are working closely with elected local officials and mayors to adapt their region to prepare for a potential second wave. We've sent them general recommendations, of course, but the idea is that each local authority can do what they deem necessary based on their local situation. Across France, I have asked representatives of the French state to work with local officials to have control plans to make sure that people are following the recommendations and the rules. It's not all about listing what we need to do, we need to make sure that people are actually doing these things, wearing their masks, proper distancing in public spaces, etc. Since the 17th of August, 30,000 controls have happened. There were 1,900 police measures implemented, corrective measures, and 53 venues were closed. We are at about 700 police actions per day, so punishments handed out for not wearing a mask. And it is up to the local authorities to decide to ramp up potentially these actions, and sometimes they are necessary, let's be honest. So as I said, there are 21 départements with active transmission of the virus, and in these regions, prefects have strengthened measures at their disposal. First of all, they are invited, they can, working with the mayor, generalize, generalize the wearing of masks in all public spaces, especially in the large cities and towns that are the most affected. This is what was done in Marseille. And I asked the police prefect to work with the mayor of Paris and with the elected officials of the Paris region where we believe it is important to act fast to reinforce mask wearing. In the département where we have active transmission of the virus, it will no longer be possible to circumvent the ban on public gatherings of more than 5,000 people. Prefects can also, when the public health data requires it, implement further measures. This is what was done in the Bouche du Rhone recently, with the closing of bars and restaurants after 11 o'clock in the evening. So these are the broad strokes of the public health action. The Minister for Public Health will be coming back to this later, and we can answer your questions as well. Beyond the public health situation, however, the government will continue to work on the social and economic consequences of the public health crisis. As you know, the French people have experienced this. From the beginning of the crisis, exceptional measures were implemented, and many of you as employees, employers, benefited from this. Financial support, part-time work support, etc. My predecessor, worked on plans for sectors that were particularly affected, aeronautical businesses, hotels, etc. Today, other sectors continue to be affected by the protective measures that we rolled out, some of them particularly acutely. These sectors are culture, sport, tourism, and event organizing. 
so that these sectors can, can continue to remain open, can continue to do business. We're not here to shut them down to protect them. We want you to continue to enjoy their services uh, individually and as a group. Therefore, we will be extending and adjusting the support measures, especially when it comes to part-time work support. To this end, and to support the work of the individual ministers working with these sectors and to decide on what is the best fit for our issue, I will be, in the coming days, meeting with representatives from all of these sectors. Today and tomorrow, I will be meeting with the sector concerned with live shows and then others in the coming days. We will be working on mitigating the financial impact of the measures at local, regional and departmental levels. The action against COVID is commendable, but does not justify leaving people out on a limb in a situation where they can no longer work or invest. Therefore, we are working with them to find solutions. Beyond what local authorities are doing, we continue to pay particular attention to all of the people amongst our citizens who have been the most affected by the social and economic consequences of this crisis. First and foremost, young people. More than 600,000 of them in September will be making their first steps on the job market. In Besançon last July, I announced never before seen measures to face this influx of new workers. Support for hiring, promoting apprenticeships, part-time working, training, and this is true for education and also for later training. This is one of the big challenges for September and I would like to call on all of the companies in France as I did yesterday when I met with the MEDEF union. The public health crisis also requires us to support our fellow citizens who are experiencing issues with their income. Measures were implemented by the Edouard Philippe government at the beginning of the public health crisis to support them. As I announced during my general policy speech, we have adjusted the September bonus upwards by 100 euros and its payment is, has already occurred. For the people with the lowest income, we are prepared to extend the measures implemented in spring. And I will be meeting with representatives of the organizations fighting against poverty in September to work with them. The crisis and its management is not just about measures and numbers, although once again I would like to underline their effectiveness. A public health crisis is solved through solidarity, is solved through understanding, through listening, through sharing. We owe this to every person who is infected and every region that is affected. My government is looking for ways to bring people together, to work together, to talk together with unions, with local authorities, with citizens. These values, be assured of this, as the President said, are the best cure for the public health crisis in its social health and economic components. Beyond the measures for safeguarding and supporting our people, our government in September will, as the President requested, be learning the structural lessons that can be drawn from this never-before-seen situation. We have already started doing this for our public health system. In July, we signed the Ségur de la Santé Agreement, a novel agreement to support health staff, to make it more attractive and to express to them all of the recognition that is owed. 
creating 15,000 new jobs, investing and modernizing the public health institutions to de-silo and to strengthen access to public health. We will also, and this has already begun, be working on re-centering in France the production of strategic health products, drugs, masks, health equipment and biotechnology. We also, and more globally, based on the circumstances we're faced with, be helping all of the economy to transform, giving people more power, moving towards an ecological transition and strengthening our networks and infrastructure. We will be massively investing so that we can quickly get back to positive growth. As you know, this is the best way to fight against joblessness and the best way to fill up the public coffers once again. That will be the goal of our public plan that will be presented in detail on the 3rd of September. It will be fully in line with the reform and transformation plan that has been implemented since 2017. I would now like to invite the Minister for Education to come to the stage and to give you an update on what we're doing for the back to school period. Thank you, Mr. Prime Minister. Ladies and gentlemen, the public health crisis is here, as we just heard, and we are using all of our energy to answer these questions. Of course, our first target is to effectively face the challenges of this crisis, remembering that education is not a variable that can be adjusted to face this crisis, meaning that kids need to go to school and they will be going to school next week. Education is vital to our society and it is, of course, vital to building our future and our children's futures. The lockdown has shown the importance of school, in fact. Without schools, inequalities would become worse, social inequalities would follow, learning to live together would no longer occur, so society would break down. It's important that all children in France can go back to school, and that is what will happen on Tuesday, the 1st of September. Of course, this requires a safe environment. This is our protocol that we published in July that allows for all situations, low transmission, medium transmission or active transmission of the virus. And as the health authorities have recommended, we are making mask wearing compulsory for middle school, high schoolers and their teachers. At the beginning of the week, I met with unions and I heard and understood their need to have a framework that is clearer, simpler, readable and as stable as possible to protect everyone, students and teaching staff. To this end, we have a simple, short protocol and any follow-up components to this protocol are being made available on our Education Ministry website. The main drivers of this policy are the following, and I'd like to remind you of this following the Prime Minister's remarks. First of all, hand washing multiple times a day. It's easy to forget because a lot of other measures are being mentioned, but uh, I'm sure that my colleague Minister for Health would agree with me. It's vital, and we are working with local authorities to make soap, hydroalcoholic gel, available in all schools. In some schools, middle schools and high schools, there have been renovation works, in fact, to make the implementation of these rules easier. Second measure, and I've already mentioned this, wearing masks, all teachers, teaching staff from preschool all the way up to high school. We didn't want anyone to be accepted from this, so even preschool teachers or even in some teaching environments, 
are not reason enough to not wear a mask. All adults will be wearing masks in schools. All of the students from the beginning of middle school must wear a mask all the way up to the end of high school. Uh, we are told from the health experts that these are the ages where wearing a mask is the most relevant. Making sure that students do not mingle too much is also one of the recommendations. I would also like to underline the importance of regularly disinfecting schools. This is something that the local authorities are doing and will continue to do in the coming months. I'd like to remind you that most of these measures are measures that we already trained to do before the lockdown and after the lockdown. So, the local authorities, teachers, the managers of schools are already ready to do this. This is a reason to be confident, based on what happened in May and June, that we will be able to continue to do these things together. At this time, we do not have any measures for the schools in more active transmission areas, but we can decide on localized actions alongside prefects, local authorities, and the school management. If ever there was a spike in the number of transmissions, we can trigger a number of things working with the education ministry. We can identify the person who was infected, we can identify the people they were in contact with, we can quickly and effectively do tests and quickly send those results to local authorities and to schools so that they can consider temporarily closing a class or a school. These are targeted measures that are in line with what the Prime Minister said on our targeted policies. This means that we can guarantee continued teaching even if a class or school were closed. Handing out education materials and remote classes, you can find all of this on the Education Ministry website. We have resources that we publish. We have hundreds of hours of classes that have already been recorded and are being made available. And we also have a My Class at Home system that is being developed. So, for September 2020, we all need to be responsible. We need to apply the protocol so that everyone can go to school safely and happily and to make sure that our students have a happy and constructive year at school. Because remember, despite the public health crisis, all of our education priorities remain to improve education and to make sure that we drive down inequality at school. Thank you. Mr. Prime Minister, ladies and gentlemen, as you know, as you just heard from the Prime Minister, the epidemic didn't go on holiday. However, it did significantly slow in its transmission rate thanks to what we did, what you did. We have saved numerous lives through what we did. We were able to break the contamination chains thanks to the measures that we implemented and thanks to the protective measures. All of the measures that we have implemented in our country aim to drive down the transmission rate as countries have done around the world. We need to continue to hunt down the virus. And there are three things in this regard that the Prime Minister has already mentioned and I would like to briefly come back to in more detail. If you want to hunt a virus, you need to identify it, you need to test. During the epidemic wave, we identified anyone who may have the virus as someone who had the virus. This has been what we've done for decades in our country with the common flu, and this is in line with international recommendations. Things have changed since the beginning of the epidemic, though. The scientific recommendations in France and abroad suggest that we need to test more. You are watching France 24. We've just been listening there to the French health minister, Olivier Véran, who has been speaking alongside the French prime minister and the French minister of education, talking about the new plans that France is putting in place to try and fight this increase in numbers we've been seeing in COVID-19 here in France. Our Philip Turrell has been listening in to that press conference as well. He joins me now uh, from home. Uh, Philip, what were the highlights out of what, first of all, the French prime minister Jean Castex had to say? 
Well, the uh, Prime Minister was keen to underline that the situation has got quite a lot worse over the last two or three weeks here in France, but was quick to say several times during his press conference that the situation has not got out of hand. It is certainly something worrying, but people should not be too concerned about going through the same kind of peak of the virus that France saw in uh, March and April this year. There are quite a lot of facts and figures that were given out by uh, the Prime Minister Jean Castex. I'll give you a few of them. Uh, 19 new departments have been uh, classified as red zones, uh, bringing up to 21 uh, the total number of uh, departments uh, in, in France in all. There have been uh, over 3,000 cases a day over the uh, past few days, a net increase in the amount of infections in France. Uh, 800 patients admitted to hospital, but a very small amount of fatalities uh, from the coronavirus, nowhere near uh, the hundreds of people who uh, died earlier this year uh, in March, April and May. Now, the uh, Prime Minister also keen to underline that France was moving ahead very quickly with testing, urging everyone to get tested, particularly those who had no symptoms, saying that they were amongst the most dangerous people because they could transmit the virus without knowing so, and therefore they needed to be tested so that they would know that they were carrying the virus and could go into self-isolation. 830,000 tests a day taking place in France at the moment. Uh, the Prime Minister saying that that was going to be pushed up, hopefully, to over a million tests by September. So uh, measures underlined by the Prime Minister were the need to keep social distancing in play and also the French government's desire that everybody should wear a mask in closed areas, in certain areas of certain cities and towns of France and in several cities and towns all over the place. And the government saying that although it's introduced a policy of closing bars and restaurants in Marseille in the south of France from 11 p.m. beginning today, uh, that measure could also be extended to other areas of the country if it is deemed necessary. Uh, Philip, uh, just very briefly, unlike a lot of other countries, France is going back to school. What's come out for school children? Well, they're very keen, uh, the authorities, uh, Jean-Michel Blanquer, the uh, uh, Minister for Education, to get schools back up and running. So all schoolmasters and schoolmistresses will be wearing masks when they go back to school, as will all pupils from middle school upwards. And the government's going to provide uh, hydroalcoholic gel for all of pupils when they go back to school beginning next week. Philip, thanks so much for that. We'll be checking back in with you in about 15 minutes' time with our next uh, news bulletin. In the meantime, do stay with us. You're watching France 24.